Hey guys, welcome back to another bedtime book review. Uh, today I'm sitting on the floor here in front of my daughter's crib because this is where uh, she has been having me sit um, and read her a bedtime story uh, every night. We, we do a bedtime story and then we say our prayers and then the eat oil for her cheek and then she goes to bed and lately she's been having me read her a story um, after she's in her crib and it's the sweetest thing because she'll um, She'll have us read us the story. She wants to make sure that she can see it. So we have a nightlight that we use. And then she'll ask for the book. <laughs> she was like, can I read it? And then she sometimes will spend a few minutes like reading it to herself in bed before falling asleep. And it just, it makes me really happy because it's so cute. And so that's why I'm sitting here today. Anyway, we're going to be talking about one of the books that she has been enjoying recently. There's been a few that she's been requesting a lot of. Uh, recently she has requested The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. This is, I guess, a classic. Um, I don't think I ever read it myself growing up, um, but I think I've seen it before. Um, it's got a really cute art style and it's pretty unique. And I guess for the time when it was written, uh, 1962, it was pretty unique, even more unique. Um, this is the 50th anniversary edition and I will get to all of the bonus material <laughs> at the back. Uh, in just a minute. But first, the story on its own merits is a cute little story about a boy named Peter who wakes up and it's snowing and so he goes outside to play in the snow. And it's very simple, like there's not a lot of, there's no real, yeah, there's no conflict in the story. It's just his day, it follows his day, he goes out, um, you know, he does things with his feet when he's walking that are fun to um, to show our daughter as we, you know, we will move her feet back and forth as we read it. Um, you can make sound effects as he's knocking the snow off of a tree and just a lot of things to point out and show. It's a cute little collage style of art. And um, our, our daughter just turned two. She's at the point where she's like memorizing stories and sort of reading by um, saying out loud what she sees on the page. <laughs> Um, and a lot of times she'll actually memorize like entire pages of her picture books or just, you know, at least recapping the story of what happens because she remembers it so well. So that's really cool. And she has been really enjoying this one. Um, we live in Southern California and so we don't get snow here. Um, and so she's never seen snow in her life. This is basically her only, you know, experience experience of what snow even is um, so she keeps asking if we can go to the snow and we're like yeah we're gonna go play in the snow but we have to wait till after Christmas because um, you know in the winter we've been wanting for years to take our husky out to play in the snow up, up in the mountains somewhere um, and we were going to last year I don't know it didn't happen the year this year we you know things I well yeah I was in no place I was in no place in my first trimester, even before the pandemic hit, to be traveling up into the mountains um, with all that nausea. But uh, yeah, we're definitely, I think she's definitely interested in going to play in the snow. And it's been pretty cool, like seeing her interact with the concept of it a little bit. Um, she previously actually has like crumpled up pieces of paper and called that a snowball. So I guess she has some sort of frame of reference, um, but I'm not sure in her mind if she understands the concept still of ice. She doesn't really understand the bit in here where he puts a snowball in his pocket to save it for later and then it melts. She goes, oh, the snowball's not in his pocket. We must still be outside. <laughs> um, so this is the 50th anniversary edition. It's got this fun gold seal on the front. And then in the back, it has this information about the writing of the story and its reception and all of this. And I have some weird thoughts about this. Like, okay, so 1962 was a different age. Apparently the idea uh, is that this was like one of the first books ever, uh, one of the first picture books <laughs> pretty much for little kids publicly or widely available that featured um, a person of color in the artwork, right? So there's a little black boy and that was 
it, the, the thing that rubs me weird about it, and I guess in 1962 this was considered benevolent of a white person to see a picture of a black person in the news in the newspaper and go, man, I want to draw a story about that kid. And just sort of seems weird and paternalistic to me, but I don't know if my perspective helps at all. And then again, you know, reading the reception of it, and there's some accounts in here about, you know, black children and <laughs> Negro schools um, being, you know, happy to see representation, which obviously is a good thing. So... Yeah, I feel like it wasn't probably, things were not handled with the kind of tact they would be nowadays. Unfortunately, there's plenty of representation of all kinds of, you know, children of different races for everybody nowadays. But I guess back in 1962, this was like a rarity. Um, and so it's still sort of that piece of history. Um, and I guess that's the the purpose of it as uh, that piece of history and as this a special edition that has all of the information at the back it's got some clippings from you know newspapers and letters and um pictures and stuff in here there's his uh his caldecott that he won all this i don't know anything else about ezra jack keats apparently this art style was not his typical art style it was something that he felt kind of inspired to do this was like a passion project for him um and I think it's a cute little story. I kind of like um, when a children's story is written in a way that like a child would speak, you know, and just like that's the way that the kid would tell a story about his days. He would just list everything and he would be excited about everything. He would list what he did, but there would be no like overarching thread or, you know, narrative structure or, you know, Oh, I'll, I'll save this part of information for the end kind of a thing like uh, when an adult tells a story ideally so I think that it's really cute um, to read stories like that and obviously something about this resonates with my daughter so I will give it my endorsement <laughs> um, I'm happy that she chose this book and I it is growing on me um, uh, every single time she asks me to read it I think I get a little bit better at my inflection and stuff as I read it to her um, and hopefully she will continue to enjoy this one because it is not too long. I always appreciate that in a bedtime book. Um, I think maybe next month I will read another story that features race because I think it's an interesting topic in children's literature even though, you know, I'm white, but my daughter is uh, half Filipino. So it is something that I have to think about probably more than, um, more than I do. So... That is going to be the topic of next week, uh, next month's bedtime book review. But if you have any other suggestions, do leave them below in comments. Um, I always look forward to you know hearing your ideas and your recommendations of books that we should check out. Maybe pick them up at our next library visit. I've mentioned before we're lucky that ours is still doing curbside pickup, so we're able to get new books. Um, and that is pretty much all I have for you today check it out. Um, down below will be my um, bookshop.org list where if you're interested in any of the books that I've covered on this series, you can find them below. As we definitely do not have snow out today, it's in the 90s and I'm in here with the fan off sweating, so I will call that a video and see you in the next one. Bye.